Bonjour, Mishko Pagnon, Queen of Dishnikas, Mangdodem. Hello, everybody. It's Sandy Boucher here once again. I'm Red Thunderbolt Woman of the Loon Clan, a proud member of Seine River First Nation in Treaty 3 territory in Northern Ontario. And okay, let's get real here. <laughs> this is going to be one of those lightning bolt episodes for those of you who don't know. Mishko Paganonque, my name, Red Thunderbolt Woman. I am said to represent that split second in time when the thunder sounds exactly as the lightning strikes. Anyone who lives in an area that has thunderstorms, I'm going to assume that you know when those two things happen together, that means the storm is directly overhead. The greater distance between the lightning and the sound of the thunder, that's the, how far away it is. The next time you have a thunderstorm, listen, you'll hear the two getting closer together and then further apart as the storm moves away. I am directly overhead. I am known for my wake-up calls, my bluntness, my lightning bolts, my one sentence that highlights what needs to be said. I never, ever do that out of disrespect. I actually do it out of respect. We have such a short time together, whether it's a 10-minute podcast episode or a one-hour keynote or even one day if I'm doing a full-day seminar. That is such a tiny, tiny bit of time as compared to someone's life journey. And when I speak to people, I am always trying to give you what you need to go forward with more wisdom, with more knowledge, with more education, so you can go forward and make a difference. And of course, obviously, that's 99% of the time coming from an Indigenous lens. It's something we, as Anishinaabe people, as Indigenous people, need from our allies. And that's where I'm sitting today. Now, over the years, I've been a quote-unquote motivational speaker. That title has never really fit me. Inspirational speaker, same deal. For almost 14 years now, I go in and I educate and I inspire and I get people believing that they can make a difference. And I am good at what I do. I don't think I'd be in business for almost 14 years if I'm not. And often, over those 14 years, I've had people ask me, okay, how can you be an Indigenous woman in Canada and an inspirational speaker? How can you be positive? How can you not be cynical? I get it. I totally get it. The path of an Indigenous woman in Canada is not an easy one, and I have a ton of privilege. My path has not been easy. Ten years of domestic violence, not easy. But compared to some, holy moly's. So I count my blessings, and I own my privilege. If we could ever just get everyone to own their privilege, we would be so much further ahead. And how can I be a motivational speaker? Well, honestly, it's really easy for me. First off, I compare my life to the life of my mom. My mom was an Anishinaabekwe from Kuchiching First Nation. She was what you would probably describe as stereotypical indigenous, meaning when you saw her, you knew she was indigenous. That does not apply to me. I get people guessing a wide range of nationalities when they look at me. My mom was born in 1927. My mom suffered at the hands of many because of her indigeneity. Because of that, my mom practiced what me and my siblings used to call when we were children. She practiced becoming wallpaper. My mom tried to disappear because she realized her very appearance her dark skin in a store, in a post office, in a clinic, upset people. 
And if you knew my mom, you knew firsthand that the one thing she never wanted to do was upset anyone. She wanted everybody to get along. She wanted everyone to be happy. If she could make someone smile, that made her day. So my mom chose to hide so that other people wouldn't get upset. And yes, that upsets me. Because a lot of people missed out on knowing an incredibly amazing woman. Because of their prejudices, because of their blinders, because of the stereotypes they chose to believe in rather than getting to know her. I have a podcast. I have four books out, three of which are now bestsellers. I am invited across Canada to speak to audiences, big and small. What is not to celebrate? That is how I can be an inspirational speaker because I see the difference in how far my voice can reach compared to my mom, and that's one generation. If that much can change in one generation, do not tell me things cannot change. And in fact, the only reason they can't change is if people choose not to be our allies and choose not to change things. And that kind of brings me to the subject of this podcast. I don't want to be cynical. I don't like assuming the worst about people. And trust me, a lot of my indigenous friends and followers think I'm really insane for doing that. That why don't you believe that people can be horrible? They, I'm sorry, I don't want to wake up in a world where I think everyone's horrible. I don't want to wake up in a world where I think all non-indigenous people are racist because that's a stereotype. But last week, I released a podcast on July 1st. And in my tongue-in-cheek way, I was celebrating National Indigenous Empowerment Day because I don't celebrate Canada Day. And I invited my listeners to ask themselves that if they wanted to celebrate Canada Day, they wanted to be a proud Canadian ask themselves why, what they were proud of. And I invited people to do that. But I also commented that I live in Northern Ontario and up here, you can look at the statistics. Alcohol is pretty common up here. And anything that disrupts a party is not popular in these parts. So interrupting Canada Day, which is a huge party for some people, I realized was not going to be popular. And by the way, I don't care if you go out and party. That If that's your path, I hope you're taking care of yourself, but it's really none of my business. No one said you couldn't party last weekend. I was just asking you to consider, do you want to celebrate Canada Day? This subject matter, the the focus of this episode is the fact, the reality, the statistics, this is not opinion, this is facts, that last week's episode about not celebrating Canada Day was my lowest episode, podcast episode, since I started doing this. Now, granted, new podcast But it had lower views than my, like, first or second episode. Way lower. Way lower. Now, the optimistic side of me says they were busy celebrating Canada Day. They weren't at home. It was a long weekend. They were out at their camps. And I really hope that's the case. I really want to believe that's the case rather than believing that people chose not to listen because they didn't want to hear. I have long said I can work with I don't know. I can work with a lack of information. It's I don't care that scares me. 
We need allies in our corner, but we need real allies, not people that are just saying they're allies because an ally realizes things have to change. An ally realizes that means they may not be as comfortable as they usually are because they're discussing things they don't know as much about. And allies are willing to do the work. So if you would love to support the empowerment of Indigenous people, long as nothing changes for non-Indigenous people, let me be the first to tell you, you're not an ally. Because if nothing changes, nothing changes. And if you truly want to be an Indigenous ally, then I don't need to tell you why things have to change. So I need you to do me a favor. If you're Indigenous, I need you to share this podcast episode with as many people as you can, knowing that you are help in helping to empower an Indigenous voice. And that's what we need to do for each other. And if you're non-Indigenous, I need you to share this podcast far and wide so that you are acting in allyship by supporting an Indigenous voice. You are not taking the mic You are not interpreting the message and passing it on. You are just sharing my voice. Because I really want to outdo last week. I want to believe in everyone that's listening to this podcast. Just like I believe in all of my followers of my blog posts and my videos on YouTube. I want to believe in you. But that takes action. Because you can't be an ally if you're not taking action. That is literally the definition of the word. So there you have it, my friends. Sorry for the emotional part of this message. I didn't see that coming any more than you did. Uh, But I guess it just highlights how much things do have to change. Because no Indigenous person in any location on Turtle Island should ever have to feel that they should make themselves invisible to be safe or to ensure they don't upset other people. That could be one of the very first things we change. Until next week, my friends, I love you. Take care. Do not forget to share this. Bye-bye.